Welcome back YouTube Pipe Smokers, Mutton Chop Piper here. Well today I'd like you to get your favorite pipe, your favorite tobacco, sit in your favorite chair, and listen to a tale that of my own device. Plus I'd like you to immerse yourself in the image in front of you. Imagine yourself smoking your pipe, walking down the dirt road to the home in the distance. 1501. It was fall again, but unlike other years, this autumn had arrived early. Morgan arrived late to a meeting with other farmers at the Crooked Crown Inn to recap this year's harvest. Once the business discussions were concluded, the conversation turned to lighter topics. I remember, said Bartholomew, or Old Bart, as everyone knew him in these parts, one time about eight years past, during an autumn such as this, they had to start making winter stew a full month early. I sure could use a bowl now, with the wind cutting through me like a knife. Morgan perked up and said, Pumpkin bread, honey cake, and hot cider. Now that'll warm you to your toes. The other men sitting at the table looked at Morgan with confusion, painted on their faces. Pumpkin bread, honey cake, and hot cider. What do you want about it, Morgan? asked Bart. I was just remembering a trip I took escorting some merchants to a conference in Bratton about 12 years back. The wonderful taste of the pumpkin bread and honey cake we had at the horse and cart inn, said Morgan. Never heard of it said Bart. Sounds to me like you're off your nut. You're not, are you? said Bart. No, replied Morgan. It happened like this. We could see the twinkling lights of the small hamlet of Stockborough in the distance. Autumn had come early than expected as night had already fallen, and the cool of an autumn day had turned into the cold of a fall evening. After a mile or so at the edge of town, there sat a huge building made of river stone. A sign extended from over the entrance that read, The Horse and Cart Inn, with a picture of a horse and cart, a pint of beer, and a bed under the letters. For in those days, not many had learned their letters and depended on pictures to guide their daily lives. Morgan, the leader of the travelers, pushed open the heavy oak door, and an explosion of sights and smells blasted their senses as he did so. The travelers entered into a large common room with a long oak bar on the left-hand side of the room, and a dozen tables with chairs set haphazardly on the right. A large fireplace made of the same river stone occupied the wall opposite the entry door, a huge fire was burning there, crackling and popping as the fuel in the form of wood was being consumed ravenously. The room was a buzz of activity, with barmaids bustling hither and thither, carrying trays of ale and what appeared to be brown bread to the tables. A sweet smell like pumpkin pudding lingered in the air. Eight to ten patrons were in the room some discussing the politics of the region, others conversing about the latest harvest. Most looked up as the travelers entered. Some looked at them with suspicion, as if to say, Who are you? What is your business here? And did so without uttering a word, before resuming their discussions. The man behind the bar was a burly rotund fellow, with an apron stained with several splotches of color, one clearly being ale, and the others that you couldn't quite make out. Morgan stepped up to the bar, cleared his throat, and said, My name is Morgan, and I am the leader of this group of shopkeepers from the city of Sheraton, on our way to a conference in Bratton. May we take lodging in your inn tonight? The large man behind the bar looked Morgan up and down, sizing him up 
trying to decide whether to throw him and his company out of the inn. When he finally spoke, he said, The name's Hathaway Brown Birch. I own the horse and cart, and as long as you don't cause no trouble, we have rooms for rent as well as food and drink for your comfort. Mr. Brown Birch, Morgan sheeplessly said, Hathy, said Hathaway in a gruff voice. Uh, excuse me, replied Morgan. Folks round here call me Hathy. Hathy, then, said Morgan. There is a wonderful smell coming from your kitchen that I don't ever recall smelling. Reminds me of a pumpkin pudding. What is it? And can we have a sample with our evening meal? Hathy's face softened a bit, but just for a moment, then immediately reformed the gruff facade before he spoke. The smell is of a local delicacy that only my missus knows how to make, and is sold only here. There's actually two smells, one of pumpkin and one of honey. Pumpkin bread and honey cake, he explained. People come from miles around to sample, eat, and stock up on our famous breads for the winter. Nothing better than a piece of my missus bread and hot cider to ward off the chills. The company of merchants sat at a table close to the fire and ordered just that. Pumpkin bread, honey cake, and hot cider. As each person consumed a portion of the soft, warm treat, they could feel the warmth return to their bodies as if they, as if they had been wrapped in a soft, warm blanket. It also had the ability to lift their spirits, and for a short time, all their cares seemed to melt away. Everyone in the little company of merchants remembers the inn and the delicious meal with fond memory for the rest of their lives. The Journal of Morgan the Just, King of the Northern Realms, born 1468, died 1538. I hope that you enjoyed the story and I hope that you enjoy wandering around in the image that's before you. Until my next video, I want to wish you and your family happy piping.